Hey, I'm Stephen. This is Solving the Money Problem and we are live. And Tesla stock is currently hitting all-time highs of around $960. So guys, um, I'll just give it a moment or two for a few people to jump in here. If you have any questions, drop them in here. I really just wanted to sort of kick things off here by saying this is not normal. Um, this, I believe, is a bit of a correction where Tesla stock is kind of catching up to where it should have been previously. You know, it's traded um, sideways for a number of years and gone down when it really shouldn't have been. Um, so this is something that you shouldn't get used to. A lot of people have been sending me messages coming in and saying, like, holy moly, like, should I buy more? Should I sell? It's crazy. What do I do? Should I mortgage my house? Like, we just need to calm down a little bit and not let the emotions get too um, in charge because this is something that doesn't happen very often. So we need to keep our heads about ourselves, you know. I suggested to some people earlier today, maybe do some paper trading when things are going really, really crazy and you're not sort of sure what's going on. Maybe if you simulate actually spending some real cash and getting in the market by paper trading, you can experience what it would have been like if you had a bought or sold and just get a taste for it uh, without going too crazy. Because if you're new to the stock market and well, Tesla stock trended on Google yesterday, number one or two for the entire day with over half a million searches. So there's, I'm sure there's a lot of new investors. I also know, I think about 12,000 new accounts on Robinhood purchased Tesla for the very first time yesterday. So just, I just need to sort of get that out of the way at the start because I can see already, I know what's happening. There's a ton of new retail investors that are like, holy moly, Tesla's gone up so much, I'm gonna miss out. And there's this fear of missing out, everyone's piling in. That being said, we just need to differentiate. Um, I'm a long-term investor, so all of the stuff that I talk about, and again, I don't give advice about investing. This is just how I think about investing. I'm sharing my thinking and my reasoning on my investing journey. You know, you guys are smart enough to make your own decisions. But I look at this as a really long-term hold. I'm talking like multiple decades, and at the very, very least, a 10-year window where I will not even consider selling a single stock of Tesla unless there's a really weird situation or an even greater opportunity for at least a decade. So that being said, if you're somebody that's looking to make quick money, uh, you're playing with fire with a stock that's moving so much. It can be really, really dangerous to just pile into something that's going to the moon because you know who, who knows what it does tomorrow. So I just really need to sort of get all the, the safety stuff out of the way before we get into the Q&A because I can see a lot of people coming here and just there will, there will be a top. There will be, this stock will not do this forever. It's not possible, right? And whether that's today, tomorrow, who knows, but it will happen. And I just want everybody to be aware because I know exactly, hey, thanks for the super chat, JH. It does matter. This, this really, really does matter. Be very sensible with what you're doing with your money, guys. And if you don't understand why the stock's moving, you shouldn't be in the stock. You shouldn't be piling in or considering you know, putting extra cash in. You should be thinking about what's the reasoning behind this move in the stock price? Do I think it's valued fairly based on what its future potential is? You need to be sort of making your investment decisions from that point of view, rather than, oh, the stock's going up, I don't want to miss out. So I'm just going to read some of the comments now. I've been ranting for a bit, but I really wanted to cover that one before we get too into it. So if you guys have some questions, send them into the chat now and I'll uh, you know, get onto those. And also, if anybody does own any Tesla shares and you've done well today, you want to you have a little bit of a humble brag or something, feel free to share if you've made a bit of a profit, uh, if you're feeling good about everything. Let's see, what do I think about other hyper growth stocks? Holy moly, you guys are talking so fast. Stocks beyond meat. I actually think that the whole sort of lab grown meat or in vitro meat, whatever you want to call it, fake meat industry is going to be huge. And in the future, people are going to look back on, on us as in the society that most people thought it was okay to eat meat the same way that we look back a few hundred years ago on people who thought it was okay to keep slaves. I don't know who the winners are going to be, but I do know that once the, the science can really be solved for producing this meat, um, specifically for human consumption, it takes out all this waste of having to raise animals. It's just so much more efficient and economical once it's scaled. So it makes a huge amount of sense, but no idea about the winners. Well, let's, let's go back to uh, a little bit more Tesla. Sorry, guys, getting through these chats. There's so many coming through. This is up a part right now. If I started a portfolio right now, actually check out my Instagram. I literally did this the other day because I'm getting this question a lot. I've started a paper trading portfolio. You can see my Instagram stories today. I've posted an update on that. Looking at it, I started it on the 27th of January, so not that long ago. And I think today I checked the return was around 40 or so percent. I started with a million dollars. I spent most of that. I bought some Tesla and a few other companies. So check that out if you'd like to say, yeah. 
Oh, just so just going to check the stock. Nine hundred and sixty dollars, guys. It's pretty nutty. Like I said earlier, or if you're just tuning in, this is not normal. So please don't expect this to be happening. Short squeeze. Um, I actually don't think so. Looking at the trading volume, there's been so many shares traded today that there's not really a, a sort of squeezing factor there. Um, I do think that there's some shorts that are closing positions, but this appears to be mostly institutional investors, big funds coming in. I guess now they have the belief that Tesla will succeed and they're really put piling in the cash. So I could be wrong, but it seems most likely. Retail investors don't account for enough of this, the float to be doing this. The stock is up 23% today. I mean, yesterday it put on $130, today it's put $180. And the video that I made a few months ago, not even three months ago, about waiting for Tesla stock to dip, I made that for today. I knew this would happen. And everybody keeps saying, should I buy now? I'm waiting for it to dip. It goes back to the points that I made in that video. If you believe in the company in the long term, short term movements like this shouldn't be your focus. You should be thinking, what's their plan to achieve their five, 10 year goals? What's that look like? Do they have a plan? Are they executing? Are they gonna get there? Do I believe in the company? This sort of stuff in the, in the big picture, in five, 10, 20 years time, you know, this is gonna be just a blip on the radar. What happens when all the bears become bulls? This, this, this is, this is what is happening right now. There is a readjustment of people's belief in Tesla. To some who had done the homework or gave them a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt, it seemed obvious earlier and others are just realizing now. They're looking around and going, oh crap, you know what? We are transitioning off fossil fuels. EVs are going to be the future of transport. Autonomous EVs, people are totally forgetting this part of Tesla still, but they're waking up to the whole idea of transitioning to EVs. And they're realizing that Tesla doesn't have any competition. They literally don't. And they're just starting to realize this. Everyone's been saying the competition's coming and people have been assuming that, you know, entrenched competitors like Porsche, VW, like all these guys are gonna come in with killer product and just crush Tesla but they're now starting to see failure after failure or delay after delay and realizing that it's not looking as pretty as it could have been. Getting through more of these comments. Uh, try to keep the questions to Tesla if you can, guys, to am I retiring now? Already am. Um, I might just do this because I enjoy it. Thanks for the channel, I've made 20K profits. Cool, that's awesome, but this don't. I'm not taking any credit for this. Like, you made your investment decision. I'm here to help, help to teach you guys sort of how I think, but Whatever you make or lose is on you. 9.63 as I uh, write this. Tipping point for shorts to panic and start covering. I think that sometime between now and battery day or, or soon after there, um, most of the sensible shorts will have exited their positions. Um, Battery day is where Tesla says, here is how we are going to scale our battery production like to multiple terawatt hours of like, I don't know how they're gonna do it. My assumptions, my, my, you know, my sort of theory here is that they're gonna license their battery and powertrains, either license the technology or actually build and sell and maybe they'll take on some sort of partner money to build factories to produce these, something along those lines. Um, but once Tesla tells us their plan, if it makes sense and they've got a plan to get to like multiple terawatt hours of battery output, uh, you really would have to be missing a few critical pieces of your brain to not understand the potential there. And then it's just a question of can they execute? And their track, they have executed on everything that they have said they were going to. The timing is not always perfect, but you know, when, when there's unknowns, you can never be certain. But yeah, they're an execution machine, so getting through these comments, guys. I'm just gonna to get to some more recent ones. Oh, thanks for the super chat there, the big Matthias. How does it feel to also make a ton of money from your videos? <laughs> um, I won't go into too much detail, but um, to be honest, the, my primary source of income is not YouTube. I've, I've set myself up, I've done, I've put the work in previously. I worked my face off for 15 years. Like, you just, you wouldn't believe. Like, 80 plus hours a week for over a decade, just relentless side hustle, blah, blah, blah. So that's all organized now. I do this because once I was financially independent, I was like, you know what, what can I do with my time to have the biggest positive impact on the most number of people? And I'm like, I'm obsessed with investing, I love it. So I thought I'll just share what's in here and if people like it, you know, they'll do it. But it's good to know that people value the, the content and they're actually watching.
Uh, am I like Arc and focus on disruptive innovation? Yeah, I have to say, um, Arc, get, get it. I've never heard anyone from Arc make a statement about something and that's made me question their thinking because all the things they talk about with the growth, like the exponential uh, growth and declining cost curves and, and technological shifts and things like this, and all the disruptive technologies they're interested in. I've been interested for a long time, I'm a nerd. They're great. They understand Tesla, it's the biggest position in their fund. My educational background. <laughs> uh, I self-learned all the stuff that mattered in my life. I'll leave it at that. How many cyber trucks should one pre-order? <laughs> As many as you can afford. Uh, thanks for the feedback. These are going way too fast. Doesn't matter. So put in the chat, guys, do you own any Tesla stock? Or are you thinking about buying? Like, what's your situation in terms of actually ownership of Tesla stock? Tesla stock splitting? Uh, I don't really think so. I mean... I actually watched Gally's stream earlier today uh, from Hyperchange. Shout out, awesome channel, go subscribe. And um, yeah, he was, well, hang on a minute. You've lost your chat. Yeah, so in terms of the stock splitting, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense because there's a lot of companies now that are starting to do fractional ownership of shares. So it's, it's probably gonna be a non-issue in the future. How high will it get? Look, who knows, but the biggest clue I think we have is Elon Musk said the other day he was confident that he can maintain a growth rate of over 50% per annum as far as he can sort of see. So whatever that time horizon is. I, I would expect that he's looking at a, a decade or so at least. So do the math. I mean, that's the best I can give you. That's what he's, he believes that he can achieve. And Elon Musk doesn't make statements that aren't coming from a place of honesty. Like when he says something, he believes that that's the answer. So if, if he believes that that can happen, he's got a plan and he's heading a path to make it happen. I think that's how it will go. We'll see. It could crash tomorrow, it could go bankrupt. There could be, you know, an extinction level meteor impact and we're all dead tomorrow. It's really impossible to know what happens in the future, but I do have a pretty high level of confidence in Tesla's ability to execute. Uh, I've been watching for long enough now and I've seen them say what they were intending to do and I've seen them do this. It's just, I think Wall Street and the mainstream media and most retail investors have taken a lot longer to realize that Tesla is actually doing what they have been saying they were going to do the entire time. That's what it all comes down to. Do I own a Tesla car? No, I don't. I, I, everything I own, apart from some real estate, like fits in a back, a 40 liter backpack. I, uh, yeah, I started sort of traveling in South America, 2018, and still doing so. And yeah, I'm living out of a backpack. I'm streaming to you guys on a phone. Hope you guys can hear the audio too. I'm gonna get some equipment soon to get things a little bit better. Wow, geez, some of you guys have got a, a lot of shares there. Hundreds of them. Wow. Congratulations to all the Tesla shareholders. Um, out of interest, has anybody sold any shares today in Tesla? Locked in some profits? You, you can't go broke doing that. Will it collapse soon? Let me just check my crystal ball. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, do I ring him there? Hey, Nick, thanks for the super chat. Why haven't we heard you say mm -mm yet? Good question, Nick. Um, I'm not sure. 16, Theo, that's awesome, dude. I, I get so excited when I see people here that aren't 18, and I, I know that it sucks you can't buy stocks, but it's so cool at that age that you guys are thinking about investing. Whether you got into this channel for, just from Tesla or through investing, I don't know, but if you're intelligent enough and you're aware that investing is an option and you're not even 18 yet, by the time you reach sort of 30 or so, 40 at the, like the absolute latest, you'll be extremely well set up financially because all of this information now, you need the information before you have the money. Because if you don't have the information and you use the money badly, you screwed up your investment, you lose money or you don't make as much as you could. So you're getting things in the right order. I didn't even really think about investing until sort of my early to mid twenties. I was great at saving, but never, never thought about it. So very envious of you youngsters. I don't think the coronavirus is really a bit of an issue. I mean. I don't watch the media. I don't know if you guys sort of 
realize this, but I go find information about stuff I care about, and that's the only stuff that gets into my my dome. So coronavirus, like I'm aware of it. It's just, the media is just making a big deal about it. Relax, okay? Like, look at Tesla stock today and yesterday and the day before and the day before, and uh, look at coronavirus and when that started hitting the press, I don't know, another buying opportunity. Will there be another buying opportunity? Put yourself in a time machine. I think it was a Nick that wrote that. Max, Max, put yourself in a time machine. Go forward 10 years, figure out what do you think the price will be then, and that's your answer. If, if the price is gonna be higher in 10 years, then there's a buying opportunity every, every day between now and that 10 year period. Arcs bull case. What's my take on Arcs bull case? I'm, I re really think that they are the most reasonable um, analysts on Wall Street. I know their price target sounds the most ridiculous, but their reasoning makes sense. The only piece of the puzzle that's a really big unknown is autonomy. When does Tesla solve full autonomy and legally have the ability to operate robo-taxis around the world? Once that happens, uh, the ARC valuation seems like a done deal for me, unless somebody has beaten Tesla to this, and I really don't see that happening, but you never know. I think if you dig enough deep enough into this, and you, if you really get your geek on and your nerd on and like try to understand things like exponential progress, the exponential uh, declining cost of technology, look at what that's going to do to the, the actual chip inside the car, as well as the cost of the batteries declining over time. It, it's a really, really, really bright picture, and the deeper you look, the better it gets. Normally, like the more you look into something, you start to find risks and holes and problems and issues, but it's the opposite for Tesla for me. The deeper I look, um, the brighter things appear. Crashing now, interesting. What are we at, 889, crashing now. <laughs> so it's crashing now. What did we open at today? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's still up for the day, even though it's just come down $70. That's probably just uh, a really large shareholder dumping a bunch of shares, so that may bounce uh, straight back. Do your fingers hurt from counting all your money? <laughs> um, actually, an interesting note, I've got an automatic net worth tracker built up, um, so yeah, I don't need to do any counting with the fingers, it all happens automatically. Wow, Jamie, you put half, wait, half your savings into Tesla stock. Wow, that's, uh, that's a pretty big call there. I will say something too, in terms of the younger folks that are watching, I sort of approached investing once I really thought about this. I was about 25 when I really got serious about investing. I thought to myself that until I reach 30, I'm willing to take larger risks. I'm gonna be single, I'm, you know, I'm still establishing my career. I don't have dependents, children, anything like that to work, you know, to look after. Um, don't want you guys to get the impression that just because I have a very large chunk of my stock portfolio, by the way, I need to be very clear, I do own other assets, stocks aren't everything. So Tesla is a lot of my stock portfolio, but it's not the majority of everything. Um, I'm only willing to put such a large amount of capital into one company because I've done the homework and I'm that confident in their ability to execute. If I was sort of advising somebody on building a portfolio, I'd never, ever, ever suggest that you'd put so much in a single company. But I think that I've removed a lot of risk by learning enough about the situation. Should you buy Tesla or do options? Look, I can't advise on that stuff. I will say that I'm just long Tesla. I think that I believe in the company uh, I'm not a greedy person either. I may make a much bigger return with options and that sort of thing, but I believe in the company. I believe I'm going to get a great return anyway. Yeah. How do you deal with regret of not buying more stock? You have to have a good reasoning process. So at the time you make the right decision. I'm in that situation now. I believed in Tesla enough that um, I began investing in 2016. When the stock went the opposite direction to the way I thought it should, I continued to buy and I just kept buying. Um, in 2019, when the stock uh, really started to slide in the first half of the year, I began selling every other stock that I owned systematically and then I all oh, sold all of those. 
I'd actually drawn equity out of some real estate just to have in case an opportunity presented itself. And I took a huge chunk, like I came out of a house, right? It was a pretty big chunk and put that into Tesla when it was almost at its bottom around the $170, $180 mark last year. Um, that's kind of my approach. Um, oh, sorry, I've lost your chat. We've got too many coming through. What about bugs, coronavirus? Sorry guys, this is coming in so fast. I need to get caught up. I don't want to miss the super chats. JH, 1500 chairs. <laughs> Give me the golden goose, yeah. I don't know if any of you guys caught, but Elon Musk on Twitter the other day tweeted out um, a, a, an emo emoji of a chair and, and then are underappreciated. And a lot of people interpreted that because if, if phonetically, if you say that, it's like chairs are underappreciated. Uh, took that to be a little bit of a hint from Elon that they had some really good news for the quarter. I think he's figured out a way to basically do this to the SEC. Um, it was a pretty clear tra transmission that they had good news to me. I mean, chairs are underappreciated. If you think of the definition of underappreciated, it's like literally valued less than it's worth. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry, just catching up on these chats again, guys. Bear with me. What is still going? Thanks, Vlad. Legend. Sorry, guys. So many of these chats coming in. We're at, uh, what are we? 887 at the moment. Holy smokes. I'm going to be scrolling for hours. Don't have weak hands. Hold. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I agree with those sentiments for me personally, JH. I'm a long-term investor. You know, I bought an apartment in Sydney in 2010. I still own it. I'm still gonna keep owning it for another 10, 20 years. That's how you get your, your wealth to compound over time. Reminds me of the marshmallow test. I don't know if you guys have heard about this. That when they, there's a test, famous psychological test that's done. Um, basically put a kid in a room at, at a table and the person there, an adult, uh, says, Great, I'm going to leave the room now. I'm going to put a marshmallow here. You can eat the marshmallow, but if you don't eat the marshmallow and wait for me to come back, you get to eat two marshmallows. I think a lot of people have their whole idea that, like the kids, most of these kids just stuff the first marshmallow in, they just can't contain themselves. But some of them actually can sort of, you know, they can delay the gratification. The same thing with stocks, you know. If you've got that long-term ability to delay gratification, generally you'll come out a lot better when, you, when you're willing to put in the work and not sort of reap the rewards uh, instantly. Holy moly. Useless companion. Thanks for the super chat. How do you think, how do you think will the competitors react on battery day? To be honest, I think there's only a few automakers that seriously really know how important battery technology is. Um, VW is among them. I think most of the other automakers are pretty ignorant on this. Like, they sh like what was happening in and Tesla's lead and how important batteries are has been painfully obvious from like for a decade and at least in the last five years. But they should have been taking steps and they haven't been taking steps. I think it might be a wake up call, but honestly, I think that uh, we're looking at sort of zombies at the moment. A lot of these traditional automakers just they're not seeing the writing on the wall. They just I mean, can you blame them though? If you're an executive, you know, a manager, you want to get your bonus, you want all the numbers to look good for the next five, seven years, and then you hit your retirement, no problem. A lot of people aren't thinking because turning a big ship around is slow, painful, and very expensive. Getting through these again. Is it a bubble? No comment. Uh, do the analysis, look at the fundamentals, and you'll, you'll figure out if you think it's a bubble or not. I personally believe that the stock is making up for lost time. Will you buy a Tesla with the money when eventually he shares? Yes, I will actually. I'm, I'm not a materialistic guy. I don't, I don't buy stuff. Like I'm happy to just sit and chill and I could, I could literally live in a cave for the rest of my life and I would be happy. I don't need things. But given that Tesla has been good to me, I am actually going to support the company. And what I will do is I'll just put that vehicle on the robo taxi fleet when it's available. So, but yeah, it's probably not going to, got to get a lot, use, a lot of use for me because I don't really drive much. I prefer to walk. Do you donate? What is your charity work? Yes, actually, um, massive plug for maps.org. They do research into um, the benefits, particularly for treating um, things like treatment-resistant depression, 
um, and all sorts of other disorders with um, psychedelics. So I'm a big supporter of MAPS. They get 100% of my philanthropic uh, funds go to MAPS. Psychedelics have had a profoundly positive impact on my life. And that is not me condoning you guys go and take acid. Don't. Crash. What do you think about SpaceX buy if IPO? They, they won't IPO, they'll never need to. They're, they're a money printer. They will be self-funding moving forward. Do I have a day job? No, I'm retired. Well, I was and now YouTube's my full-time thing. It's not a job though, I love doing it, so. Why don't I have a Tesla? Don't need one. Gosh, thanks for tuning in by the way, guys. I just noticed there's a thousand of you in here watching me scroll through comments. You must not have a lot to do other than uh, count your riches today. All right, trying to get caught back up. Holy moly moly. Gabor or Gabor? I'm not sure. Thank you, dude. Where am I from? Australia. What other stocks do I own that are worth interest? I've got a uh, video, my three stock portfolio, Google, Amazon, and Tesla. That's 90, probably 99% of my portfolio, my stock portfolio is those three companies. Have I done Deacon Tebra? Yes, long story. I'll say that for another video. Oh my gosh, that, yeah, a lot of uh, psychonauts here too. Okay, great. I've, I'm caught up with the comments now. That's perfect. So the stock's at, what, 887 now. Let's have a look. And have the market closed? Yeah, just perfect. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, cool. Right, so stock closed today at 887. Unbelievable. Six months ago, we were at $228. So we've seen the stock run about nearly 270% uh, in six months. But as I say, I feel that it was just sort of catching up to where it should have been. Whoa. Will SpaceX ever go public? I, I really doubt it. At what price did I buy? My buy price, my average cost basis is 225 and 5 cents, including uh, the fees. So it looks okay today. But I, I, I believe that in 10 years' time, even four-figure buy prices will probably look pretty good. I do really do believe in this company executing. How many shares? <clears throat> I don't want to answer this question yet. Uh, the reason being, I'm actually I have a pretty active dating life, and a lot of the women that I date see my social media and then to the channel and rah rah rah. And I would want them to like them me because I'm awesome, which it's true, not because of my money. <clears throat> Dip in the end of the day. Yes, that's right. Can't go up forever, mate. It's another upcoming company, good investment, research. Look, I try to keep my eyes um, on what's happening, but I'm not really, I'm not an investor. Like, I'm good at investing, but I'm not an investor. I'm just a guy that if there's opportunities, doesn't matter what they are, whether it's an investment opportunity or something else, I'm just, I will be interested in them. And so I'm more likely to find out about a new investment opportunity because I'm, I'm a nerd and I'm paying attention to the latest, you know, in genomics research or, you know, in the latest astronomy discoveries rather than because I'm trying to find a great investment. And I think that's been true uh, for all the companies that I've invested in. Like the, my, the core of my, my stock portfolio, Amazon, Google um, and Tesla, these are companies that I was aware of and interested in and following years before I even thought about investing. And because I did that and I discovered enough about them to understand their ability, like how good they were, I was like, okay, you know what? I realized that these guys are gonna be dominant for some time and that's how I got into those. So I think that's a good approach for investing is don't, I know it's kind of weird, but expose yourself to the technological change and the scientific progress that's happening in the world. Understand what's going on broadly and then you'll be able to identify opportunities when you see them. You'll be like, holy moly. Like this is the thing with EVs. I know that the whole world is, 100% of new cars in the future will be EVs, approximately. Fact. Today, it's almost one, two percent. I mean, you don't really need to be a genius to figure out somewhere between here and here, somebody's gonna do pretty well who's making EVs. <laughs> so um, those kind of insights can help you with decision-making a lot. 
Neuralink, will they go public? I think they may. Uh, it depends on whether or not they need the money in first. I'm not sure how they will bring products to market at scale. Um, cost effectively, I've got no idea the process involved in, in producing those, but it's, it's so exciting. That'll probably be the most important company that Elon Musk creates. Yes, I do have more videos in the investment philosophy pipeline. Uh, close to 50k subscribers, congrats. Thanks Thanks so much for everyone who's supporting the channel too. You know, the funniest message that I see in the comments is like, dude, I just realized I wasn't subscribed to your channel. I've been watching all of your videos. I just, I didn't realize. But yeah, thanks heaps for the support. I had no idea what a, what a passionate community there was. Um, so it's really awesome to see that you guys are uh, yeah, enjoying the content. Appreciate it. Do I think the current price is right or will the stock settle down? Depends on the time horizon. I, I think that we're getting towards where the stock should have been already. And that's not accounting for the future. It should, like, I feel that based on what was happening from, but the stock basically traded sideways from like, I think it was probably about like 2014, probably 2014 to 2018. Four years did nothing. Yet their revenues went up by multiples and multiples. Like it didn't make sense to me. So I think we're really where we should have been today, now, anyway. And then that's not accounting for the fact that Tesla's uh, become more profitable sooner than people realised, and things look very good in China and Europe as well. Can I date you? No. Know? <laughs> Sorry, Luca, dude. Uh, I'm into women exclusively. Um, if any are watching, feel free to slide into my DMs. <laughs> but there's no DMs on my YouTube, just for the record. <laughs> How tall am I? What is this? Uh, will Neuralink ever go public? Repeating. Oh, missed super chat. Sorry, getting up this. I think Tesla will crash. Is it overvalued? Yeah, look, I think that the stock will certainly not run vertical and then just begin moving consistently from there. We're going to have some kind of coming back to Earth after this run to the moon. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think we're getting caught up to fair value now. Virgin Galactic, um, um, it's a cool company. I've been following that, them since before they existed when the Ansari X Prize was uh, won. And then Virgin bought their company. Totally agree, okay, useless comparison. Totally agree, the competitors are so far behind. On the EV mindset, I'm waiting to turn 18 so I can buy. Damn, dude, you're a baller. Dropping 20 euros and you're not even 18 to the channel. That's probably in proportion the, uh, the most generous uh, super chat of the day. Thank you so much. What do you think of Tesla's other company, Boring Company? Boring Company, awesome idea. Another industry that just needed to be disrupted. And I think got, there'll be some good integration between Boring Company and Tesla in the future, definitely. Do I think Boring Company will blow up this year? Um, no. Uh, I think it's, it's going to take them a little bit of time to prove themselves. These projects take a while to actually do the tunneling and blah, blah, blah. But once the, um, the tunnel in Vegas is, is cranking and a few other projects have been done, then there's going to be other municipalities that go, oh, damn, the numbers on this are really, really good. We need to get some of them tunnels. So I think it's going to be a very exponential uh, ramp, but they'll need some time to, yeah, still need a bit more proof of concept, I think, before people really realise. Any cannabis companies I'm interested in? No, I mean, I'm a huge consumer of the product. Tesla stock reaches an all-time high, and so do I. That's one of the rules that I have, but, yeah, I don't really uh, follow any of the companies in particular. Do I trade a leverage? Uh, technically a tiny bit, yeah. I've borrowed some equity from real estate to buy a tiny amount of my Tesla holdings. It's still a lot, but in the scheme of things, not much. But uh, no, but for real estate, uh, I leveraged 80 to 90% as I built my real estate portfolio. I turned, I more than 10x my initial capital in seven years. And that was primarily to leverage plus being smart and buying in growth markets and buying undervalue. Just catching up on these again. Ryan, thank you so much. You mentioned that you use an automated system to manage your wealth. Is that something you put together or publicly? No, it's like it's a gigantic Google spreadsheet that I've made. It's it's plugged into all the live stock updates and foreign currency. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, being on the spectrum helps in that regard, but it's very custom as well. It's tailored to the exact assets I own. I've got the different pieces of real estate that I've got in. I manually update the valuation on those. That's about the only thing that's manual. Um, yeah, I recommend if you really want to get a good handle on your finances, build your own. Because doing that is going to get you so intimately familiar with your finances itself that it's worth doing just for getting that knowledge of where you sit and the big picture even um, beyond the information you get out of it. Just getting a snapshot, it's worth doing just for that. Is 
Sorry, guys. Sam, thank you. New markets, Tesla, get into SA, India, or Africa. I think India will be the first of those. Well, South Africa will happen probably sooner. But uh, of those major markets, I think India uh, will be first. But it might take some time. I actually have Indian fans, I hope, I'm hope i sure there's a bunch watching, make up uh, somewhere between sort of the top seven to ten in terms of countries for viewership on my YouTube channel, which is uh, interesting. So there's a disproportionately high number of uh, people from India watching this particular content versus the amount, amount of just overall Tesla investors around the world. So there's a lot of interest there. Carsten, thank you so much. Have I seen Tony Seba's 2020 keynote? No, I have not. Uh, cool, I will check that out. Sorry guys, getting through these again. <laughs> Useless companion. You owe me 350 euros now because that's what these 40 euros will be worth when they were in, if they were invested into Tesla until 2026, if I'm right. <laughs> this matters. Good stuff, mate. I, I appreciate that. Um, 60 million shares traded today. Damn, dude. I haven't seen the volume for the end of the day yet. I started the stream before, but that, yeah, there was a lot. One sec, guys. How do you invest in real estate apart from actually buying properties? That's that's pretty much how you uh, do it, Vlad. Um, if you want some key key fundamentals for real estate, understand the market well enough to know if something's undervalued, and then from there buy something undervalued because you make money immediately on day one, which you can access immediately. Two, buy something that's old and a bit run down so you can add value and renovate. Because if you're good at renovating, you put in one dollar, you get two dollars out. It's like literally. You can spend infinite money renovating if you've got enough properties to renovate and if you're good at it, you will make a profit on all of those. You just, yeah. Um, and then the third thing is buying an area that's poised for growth. Um, look at the fundamentals, look at the statistics, try and get an understanding of things like population growth, blah, blah, blah. Pretty frizzy. When will Tesla build a factory in Europe? They're working on it now. They'll be producing vehicles from that factory by 2021 at some point. Uh, if I was estimating, I think this is probably going to, the factory won't be finished this year. We've got to clear um, some trees. They had to get rid of some old World War II bombs and stuff like that as well. Um, but progress will be pretty quick. I think that that will begin ramping in early 2021. We'll see. Don't have a crystal ball, but that's my best guess. Are you high? Of course, buddy. Every video ever. Don't tell anyone. What do I think of Neo? Yeah, look, um, cool company. I hope they succeed. That's all I really have to say on that, though. I don't have a huge amount of um, useful information to share otherwise. Refinance till you die? Uh, no, definitely not. Am I comfortable buying at these levels? Well, I am not buying. I have enough Tesla stock. Actually, a friend asked me a while ago, like, why don't you buy more? And I said, I have enough. I've done the numbers and my projections and, yeah, got enough. Oh, super chat. Uh, thank you. Hey, Geta. I hope I didn't butcher your name there. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, thoughts on the hypothesis that many of Elon's products, not just SpaceX, are ultimately for Mars? Duh. 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 Electric vehicles, rockets, tunnels. Here's what's going to happen. Roughly, SpaceX is going to send Teslas and and equipment and they're going to build boring company tunneling machines and build tunnels and create like a labyrinth and that's going to be the housing for people on the Mars colony because you don't need to build structure. It's already airtight, blah, 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 blah. It makes a whole lot of sense and electric vehicles, you know, you can use solar power on these other planets as well. It makes so much sense. Uh, there's a huge synergy between these companies. Uh, the only miss the piece of the puzzle that doesn't really have a, a clear path to sort of be part of this cohesive whole is Neuralink yet. What was the short squeeze? I don't really think we've had a short squeeze yet. Some short covering, but not a whole lot more. By the way, guys, after hours now, just checking, we're at $900. Um, so the stock's still moving around. There's another yeah, few hours of after hours trading to happen. So we'll see where, where things sort of wind up. But that uh, big sell off there, yeah, didn't seem to have a huge impact long term. Elon said he wants to get 1 million people to Mars by 2050, which means if you want to go to Mars for a few years, you would have to be one out of... Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 
I, I actually have a list of goals, and I've had them for a long time. One of them was see Earth from orbit, another was visit the moon, another was visit Mars. Um, these before SpaceX existed. And I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to make that trip to Mars um, you know, sometime in the next decade or two. I can't wait for it. Am I a millionaire on paper yet, John? Hmm. Very personal question there. If you really do some digging, you can actually figure that information out. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you uh, look for some clues. Thanks, DT. Have I looked at covered put options? No, I have not. Like I said, I'm a simple investor. Uh, I, I've got, there's only so much kind of cognitive energy I like to use in a day. For my investing, it's like, if I identify an opportunity or a company, that's enough. I'm in, done. I don't want to get too fancy. I know that there's plenty more money to be made, but I want to keep that energy for other stuff. Like creating content for you guys. It, it is very mentally draining, believe it or not. They, those videos take a lot out of me. As a 14 year old, what should my first investment be? In your knowledge, dude, or do um, that. I really mean that too. Like everyone that's watching this, like in terms of investment advice, even though I won't give any financial investment advice, the best investment advice I can give anyone, and I really genuinely mean this, is invest in yourself. Take a percentage of your income every year, whether it's one or two percent, three percent, five percent, you could even be 10 percent or more, and invest in your knowledge and development. Go to courses. Read books, listen to audiobooks, watch YouTube, sign up for courses, get coaches or mentoring, like learn and learn and learn and learn. Because what happens is if you keep building up these skills and knowledge, you become really valuable to the marketplace. You have a huge skill set and that can transition into other areas. My path from you know graduating high school to where I am now has not been linear. I have done so many different careers that you guys would not imagine. I worked as a designer. Uh, I learned web development, I've done video, I've been a, a journalist, a photographer, like on a million other things as well. Um, and all of these skills have allowed me to either start businesses or understand communication or influence or how to invest, how to meet people, how to network, all of this stuff is really useful. And I know that this is not, you're like, oh, great investment advice, Stephen, you idiot, uh, what should I buy and what should I invest in? But trust me, the best financial return you will ever get is on the money you spend on yourself. You will never get a better return. If you spend money wisely on you, improving your skills, your knowledge, your information, your self-awareness and understanding of who you are, what drives you, what's important to you, and getting all the skills you need to move through life seamlessly, you can't get a better return than that. I have spent, in my lifetime, tens if not hundreds of thousands probably on myself on personal development. Mic drop. 14, 11, oh man, this is, <laughs> dude, this is so awesome. To all the youngsters in here, I'm so excited that you guys are in here. Learn about investing and save as much as you can, like start working jobs, side hustle, create little businesses, whatever you can do. Uh, by the time you are able to start investing at 18 and you've saved some money and you've got all this knowledge, you'll just be out of the gates like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I am six. <laughs> I'm sure you are, Damien. Uh, am I? Oh, you just come in. Anyways, see you around. Okay, cool. Thanks, mate. Thanks again for the super chat, useless companion. Wow, there are quite a few young folks in here. That's great. I'm envious of you guys. I didn't wake up to investing until I was a lot older. How did it feel on your last day of having a job? What was your mindset? Long story, but the short version is, uh, yeah, I started a side business and I had a mentor helping me, teaching me everything he knew. I just wanted to follow in his footsteps. Like I said, invest in yourself and your knowledge and your education. Um, I started this business and, and I asked him one day, when can I quit my job? We did the numbers and he said, on Monday. So I gave notice on Monday and, um, <clears throat> and I remember actually the way that I said to my boss, I said, oh, wait, can we have a, um, a chat? And when we sat down and I said, I've got some great news for me. And I gave him notice. I was very nice about it, but uh, it was a very, very, very unpleasant working environment. Um, and he was very, very negative, and so were a few other people that worked there. So I was very happy to be leaving. It, that, that, working at that one place drove me to early 
leaving early. It drove me to starting a business because I wanted to get the hell out of there. I just, I just did not enjoy being there. Um, and yeah, he told me, um, you don't know what you're doing. You're going to lose all your money. It's risky. Like you're young, blah, blah, blah. Just, you know, trash the whole idea. And I said, I thank you so much. For, thank you, but I believe I'll be okay. I appreciate your concern. Um, and that sense of freedom of knowing now that the rest of my life, everything is sort of in my hands. I you know, nobody could fire me or, or sort of make me work when I don't want to, etc. Having that sense of control and freedom uh, for me was really, really important. It was, a, it was a very positive day. It took some work to get there too. So yeah, bit of relief. But I, as soon as I got back, I was straight to work. I was answering calls uh, for clients for my new business and just going crazy. So I didn't really take a break. Wow, lots of young folks in here. That's really cool. So envious of you guys. Adventures with Sean, thank you so much. What do you invest in assets to make money slash passive income if you don't buy anything? You can put in sweat equity, build a business or product, something that can be set up to pay you uh, when you're not doing anything. I'll give you guys an example, like just a really simple example of something, okay? A YouTube channel, if you get to a point where you can monetize, you make a video and if people are watching it in the future, even though it's tiny, 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 you'll be getting you know a tiny, tiny incremental amount of income from that video every time somebody watches it. That's a form of passive income that costs you nothing, right? You've got a phone probably, you can film your video, on the, put it on, online and there you go. Lots of ways you can build a business, create value and create something that is leveraged or recurring so that you don't have to be trading your time directly for money anymore. Owning real estate is another way, but obviously you need to buy that. So we're talking about passive income without buying. You just have to create something of value that, that will produce income for you while you're not doing anything. We will Tesla join the S&P 500 and what do you think will do to the price? Yeah, well, once uh, Tesla's shown, I think it's uh, a profitable year, they'll be included. I think that before, if inclusion looks inevitable, there's going to be a lot of institutional buyers buying the stock, which might be happening now, um, because they want to get in before it moves. And there's going to be a lot of like buying pressure when it does actually get included, because all these funds have to buy. It's going to push the stock price up. I can't see doing anything otherwise. Wait, 50k subs? Did I don't know if I'm actually there yet, but thank you for the congratulations. If Hydraulic Press channel, you guys are freaking awesome. I love that channel. <laughs> if anybody has not seen the Hydraulic Press channel, Highly recommend it. It's like the most amazing thing ever. And this is just like things like channels like that are why YouTube was invented. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, getting through these chats again, guys. So, a thousand by the end of the week. Yeah, well, you never know. It could be ten dollars at the end of the week too. Adam Jonas might be right. Thanks for the super chat, Ryan. What do I think fair valuation of Tesla is? I don't think about uh, stocks in the same way that most most people do. That's why I invested in stocks that valuations don't look like they make sense by conventional metrics. I'm looking at the future. I'm looking at what are all the tailwinds. So the battery costs are declining for Tesla. The cost of the computer chip, like the most expensive part of their, their car is the battery. Then the computer. Those things are both on declining cost curves. They're going to continue to get cheaper even if Tesla doesn't improve anything. Just over time, the technology is going to get better. So on top of that, they've got improving margin and stuff. If I look at that and then look out to the future and then consider what competitors are in the landscape now, how are they positioned, what can they do? I'm thinking about evaluation based on execution into the future, not today. I don't care what Tesla's worth today. All I care about is in the future, will they have executed on some of these plans and, and what about the competition? What's that gonna look like? And if I believe that they're gonna be in a better situation tomorrow, so to speak, than today, then that makes sense to me. That's, that's really how I look at this stuff. It doesn't matter, like, if Tesla keeps executing, let's just imagine this, if Tesla kept executing perfectly forever from now, there wouldn't really be any reason for there to be downward pressure on the stock, not to say that it couldn't go down, but, um, so I'm just looking about execution and, and what does the big picture look like, um, yeah. Getting through your comments again, guys. They're coming in quick and fast. Ford just reported a Q4 1.7 billion loss. Okay, I don't know if you guys can confirm that. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be pretty common though for the traditional automakers. I don't think people really understand how incredibly expensive it's going to be for these guys to transition to EVs. Most of the engineers they have are going to be useless because they design engines, and not batteries. Like it, it's totally different. It's, it's like it's like asking, you know, hiring a gymnast, you know, to 
to fight in a boxing match, right? They're an athlete or they're a sports person, you know, they're physically active, but it's, it's not quite the same uh, thing. But there's gonna be a lot of pain. These guys are gonna have equipment and tools and all this investment in, in physical items that are just completely worthless and useless. It's gonna be really, really brutal. Do I think Tesla will switch to hydrogen? No, hydrogen's a really bad idea, man. I won't go into the, the physics and stuff of that, but yeah, not, a, not, a, not, not likely to be a, a good option. Awesome. Thanks, Carson. Again, I will watch that video of Tony Seba, I promise you. <laughs> uh, all right. Tesla stock now, what are we at? 903, if anyone is curious. Yes, hydrogen is a fool's errand, I think. Tesla will be a dividend company one day. I think that if they see it won't be harmful to their plans to accelerate their transition to sustain like basically if tesla's banking so much money and they look forward and they can't they literally can't think of any way they could possibly have a need to spend x amount of money because they just they have so much cash coming in that it, they don't need it they may start issuing a dividend um they may do stock buybacks like i don't know honestly uh i don't really care too much about that i'm not investing in tesla for cash flow um I have other assets for cash flow that sort of pay me while I sleep. So my stocks are all about uh, growth and eventually in the future I sell some of them. The main thing Tesla will work on in 2020, scaling production of batteries is gonna be the main one. It's obviously gonna be the factory builds and getting production out, but Tesla's, Tesla's only focus right now is it should be getting battery production as as much production as possible as soon as possible. That's their only goal. Outside of that, you've obviously got collecting data for self-driving, which is happening in the background sort of anyway automatically. That's more important, like solving full self-driving, but that will happen automatically now because the cars are collecting the data. That's just like just gonna, it's a recursive feedback loop. It's gonna keep iterating and getting improved and better on its own. So batteries, 100%. What ETF has great potential? I do actually own an ETF in my fund. I've got ArcW, which their biggest holding is Tesla. Fancy that. Actually, also in a tiny, 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 tiny slice of um, Tencent, who, funny enough, also own a slice of Tesla. Thanks for the super chat, Mark. You're a legend. What's my opinion about VW putting so much effort into the future of EVs? VW, I think, are the most likely legacy automaker to survive the transition. I uh, don't, like, um, Herbert Deese gets it. Uh, I really, really, really can't see any other automaker that's saying anything that makes any sense. They may know it internally, at least some of them understand, but the only other automaker that's doing the things they need to actually to survive is VW. Um, I hope they do survive um, because we need some of these companies to make it because Tesla can't, can't do the job on their own and I think that a traditional automaker surviving this transition is probably gonna come out the other end better than somebody just trying to start up into the industry with absolutely no experience at all. Having some experience that's kind of relevant is better than nothing. I'm hired to 420. <laughs> uh, yes. Don't worry about it, Jake. I'm trying to send money, I don't need it. I appreciate your support. You being here is the best support you can have. Do I see Tesla being a bigger company than Google and Amazon? Yeah, yeah. I think Amazon is gonna continue growing, uh, so is Google. Google in particular. Oh, shite, my, 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 my assistant for the company whose name I just mentioned popped up. I, can't, I better not say that word again, otherwise my phone's gonna be going berserk on you guys. Sorry, but um, yeah, I do see uh, Tesla exceeding both of their valuations in the future. They have a roadmap that goes further and wider. Google, you know, they make money selling ads. Like, we're talking about cents per transaction type of thing. Tesla's, uh, we're talking about, you know, five-figure products. Cybertruck engineering genius soon at one million views. Yeah, a lot of people actually, uh, the, the, the general feedback from the Cybertruck is engineering genius video was, oh, 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 now I get it. Oh, oh dude, I get it now. Dude, this is sick. That was kind of the response, because a lot of people looked at it and like vomited in their mouth. 
but they didn't understand why it actually looked that way. Um, having a pretty clear picture of what the Cybertruck is in terms of from the engineering perspective, they made it. The, the criteria was it's got to be you know cheap to make and efficient and cheap and safe, blah blah blah. So it ended up looking like that as a manifestation of those requirements. A lot of people, I think that video opened their eyes up to why, because Tesla didn't explain that at the presentation. I think they kind of rushed through things after the old uh, incident. So I think a lot of people missed that, um, that understanding. And once they realized it, suddenly instead of looking at it and thinking it's ugly, they weren't judging it on aesthetics. They were judging it on, wow, that's really smart. I, I understand now. How old am I? 34, I think. Do I own a Tesla? No, I don't. I don't have a car. I don't need one. What is your favorite psychedelic? Um, I don't want to be seen to be condoning these things because, uh, yeah, do your homework. But LSD has been very useful in my life. I was a much worse person before that had entered my system once. Who's the closest competition? Thanks, John. Um, there isn't any at the moment. I mean, BYD would be the closest competition, but I don't really see them as a competitor to Tesla. They're making electric vehicles, they'll do fine, but if we're not talking the same, we're not talking iPhone on wheels, basically, that's also poised to completely dominate other industries. So, yeah. Th this is why I keep laughing about the, the competition. It's, I've never seen, it's just like watching Google just run away with search and then realizing their lead was unassailable and like, good luck catching them now. Their search is better, their algorithm's better because more people use it, so it gets better. It's like um, Google uh, with Tesla with their self-driving AI. Their lead will accelerate on that. Which car company will not make it? I think most of them will go bankrupt or merge. And I'll probably be right and I'll probably cut this video in five, ten years time and clip it and go, I'll call it. It's just going to be so capital intensive and so time intensive to actually turn this, the huge ships around. It's just like... They, honestly, these car companies are better off bankrupting themselves. I mean, it's not an ethical thing to do, so I'm not recommending it, but the best way they could survive is bankrupt themselves, start a new business just doing EVs, and hire you know 90% new people and go from there. So basically, they just need to be a startup. Overvalued? No, look, I'm a long-term investor. I still think Tesla's cheap today, but... If you're a short-term investor, then I can't really comment about that. Thanks for the super chat, Johnny. How did I connect all the dots for my analysis on Tesla? Cool question. I just put a lot in, like a lot into my head. Uh, like I said, I've been following this company <clears throat> since the original Roadster days. Not as an investor, but just I was interested in what was happening in the technology sort of space. And um, it just became just more and more compelling that this company was just so far ahead and the technology that was in their, their products was going to keep getting cheaper and that no one else was even making the efforts to start trying to catch up with them. It just, it just became too hard to ignore. Lithium or solid state? I think uh, I'll save my battery comments for a future video. I'm going to be going a little bit more in depth in those soon. Elon Musk, the richest man on earth in five years? Possibly so. I think in 10 years, very likely. How many tes Tesla do I own? Can't tell you that. It's more than one. <laughs> and less than the entire float. <laughs> Pat, thanks so much, dude. If you guys haven't checked out Pat Flynn, he's awesome. Cool books, podcast, and channel. BYD was Pink Sheets. This matters. What about Neo? Like I said, like Neo, I hope they they are successful, but it's too early for me to really have a huge amount of confidence in their ability to execute yet. What job did I quit? I was working as a graphic designer, which is hilarious because I'm not a very visually creative person, but I got by. Hey, thanks, Messi. Rivian, I think, had some potential. Uh, I'm not really sure now. With Amazon's involvement in terms of funding Rivian, um, how that company is going to evolve from here, like it almost might turn out that they basically just make vehicles for Amazon, ex almost exclusively, because Amazon is going to be needing hundreds of thousands of vehicles, and that's going to take a long time to ramp up. So it may turn out that like Rivian may even get acquired by Amazon outright, and then just become Amazon makes its own vehicles because it's cheaper to make use EVs and it's cheaper to make them. 
and they're planning to <laughs> their plan probably is that no one else on earth is probably going to even need a van because Amazon is doing all the work of all those vans they've taken over everything we'll see but that's certainly helpful having that outside investment most fossil fuel companies will die too yeah they're toast if they're not moving into an alternative they're screwed Thanks, Chris, for the super chat. Solar roof can scale independently of batteries. Thoughts? Yep, 100%. It can definitely scale independently. And I think that's one of the reasons Tesla's pushing solar so hard now because that can ramp, that can spool up to really high volumes without having any impact on the battery. You know, it's not going to be battery constrained. Thanks, Nashiki. All right, guys. Wow. 9.30, the stock is at now after hours. So it's coming back about halfway after that slight drop off. So guys, still getting through all these comments. Adventures with Sean. What should I learn to make good videos? Get good at writing. Communication, that's 100%. YouTube is a communication format. Um, being entertaining and engaging helps, but at the end of the day, if you're not communicating something useful and of value, no one's going to watch. That's the only thing that matters. I mean, I'm, I'm streaming now on a, like a smartphone. There's an echo in the background. There's well, a thousand odd people are still tuned in here because they feel they have something of value to say. So, yeah, just being able to communicate something of, of value is probably the most important skill. The rest of the stuff will come with experience. Favourite music? I'm a metalhead from way back. I've caught up again on the comments. Great, guys. All right, I'll wrap this up pretty soon. I'm just going to see if you guys have any more questions I can answer. Any funds that aggregate small investors for Tesla? Um, I think the best option if you're looking at like getting into Tesla sort of cheaply for a fund that's heavy, um, you could probably look at something like ARK W. The ARK funds are pretty all... Like, Tesla's the highest holding in, like I think, three of their funds. Um, it's not quite the same as owning Tesla directly, but I have a lot of faith and confidence in their decision making. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, that article may not exactly be perfectly accurate. There's, there's debt attached to that two and a half million dollars, so it's, it's not as good as it sounds, trust me. Impact of coronavirus. Yeah, I mentioned this earlier in the, uh, the stream. I, no big deal. The media just likes to freak out about stuff. If it bleeds, it leads. And yeah, it's being blown out of proportion, guys, trust me. You'll forget about this soon. I'm not saying that, you know, it's not an issue, but I don't think it's really gonna have a big global impact. People are just freaking out at the moment. I mean, look at Tesla stock the last few days with coronavirus spreading through the media and all that fear. Do I like any cryptocurrencies? Uh, 20, 2014, I had a number of Bitcoins. I no longer have those. Uh, that was in the Wild West days. So unfortunately, the coins that were mine no longer are in my possession. We'll leave it at that. That potentially, uh, yeah, could have been quite a large sum, but I believed in it and I was interested in it, but as an investment asset, it was very speculative. You know, I knew that it was pretty high risk. So cryptocurrency is cool, like blockchain, that kind of technology is definitely going to be the future of, of transactions and record keeping, but I can't pick winners, so I don't, I don't own any crypto. I actually donated the last of that to maps.org. Any upcoming company? No. I'll find opportunities if they come to me. Uh, why are investors nervous about Tesla debt? I don't really think any investors are at this stage, especially now they've got those convertible bonds. $4 billion of debt is just going to disappear with a bit of um, stock dilution. So what brokerage do I use? In terms of brokerage, guys, you have to do your own homework on those ones because I've been looking and looking and looking and I cannot find a good stockbroker that has global coverage that I can recommend. I can recommend in X country or Y, and you know, I can recommend if you want to do paper trading and stuff, but um, yeah, just get online and type into Google, stockbroker plus your country, and then read some reviews and go from there. Favorite Tesla YouTube channel sources. I've actually got a few recommended channels and featured channels on my page, so check it out. Yes. Best guess for full autonomy, any comments on his compensation package? In terms of achieving full autonomy, I reckon we're probably two years away. Uh, I think that somewhere in that ballpark that they talk about the long tail, you know, the, and I think that there's gonna be a few cases that you, you wouldn't wanna 
have said the car is safe to be driving itself and then it encounters something for the very first time and doesn't know what to do. Um, so I think that we're going to have to account for that as well. Having the, like you know millions of cars on the road will still take a little bit of time. But long story short, it's definitely going to be like the first half of this decade and it's going to surprise everyone. Adam Jonas, yeah, I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to um, his his estimates on Tesla. He has, hasn't been on the money um, a lot. Books, yeah. I'm actually going to put together a recommended list of books for you guys in the future. I've had a lot of people asking for book recommendations and I read a ton, a ton. Well, I listen to audiobooks a ton, like a book a week type of thing. Um, and so, yeah, I am going to put a list together to share those, investing and otherwise. What happened to the awesome looking Tesla solar roofs? Yeah, they've just come to market. They're, they're starting production, uh, or they started production already. They began um, installations as well. <clears throat> they're still ramping up. That's the really big push this year. Um, with 4 million houses of roofs per year um, in the US, that, that's a potentially huge market. If Tesla captures even just like, you know, like 10% of that, like even 1% of that is like 40,000 units and the average price of those is like 30, 40,000. It's insane, insane revenue. So people are really underestimating Tesla Solar. I'm actually going to be doing a video on that, uh, the potential of the solar business soon. Do I think Tesla stock will split? No, probably not. Fractional shares now are a thing and they'll be ubiquitous soon. So probably no need to. Who else is high AF right now? <laughs> oh my gosh. What will Tesla do to make Cybertrucks legal in EU? Well, actually on the Cybertruck order page, it says in the fine print that the specifications are US based and all Cybertrucks in, brought into international markets will be adjusted as necessary for local regulation. So whatever they need to do, they'll do. But I also have a feeling that some of these laws may not actually make sense. Like having to have like rear vision mirrors doesn't make sense today when you can use a camera to do the same thing and a screen. So I think that in some cases, Tesla may actually push back at regulators and go, listen guys, don't be stupid. Like this doesn't make sense now. So you change a rule, but stuff that needs to change if there's any like, you know, a giant uh, cyber truck in, you know, the small streets of Rome, probably gonna be a little bit big. So they might kind of uh, squish the dimensions down as well. We'll see. Do I have a job or not? Yeah, my full-time job is creating content for you guys. Do I think Elon does psychedelics? I've made a video about that. It's the very first video on my channel. Elon Musk's psychedelic secret. Watch the video and uh, pay attention to, to how long the video is too. Bit of an Easter egg. Why do they call it Gigafactory? Uh, it was just a bit of a reference to gigawatt hours of output on batteries. I think. Maybe I made that up. Uh, delicious, um, yes, the answer is yes to your question. How many women are you dating? Um, more than one. Uh, they, they know, just so you guys are aware, I'm not um, creeping around like a, a sleaze bag. Uh, but yeah, I date a few women, I'm sort of traveling around the place. And yeah, not ready to settle down yet. I've got big plans and a lot of travel in my future, so yeah. If any of you guys are like really hopeless with women, I recommend a book too. How to Be a 3% Man by Corey Wayne. Changed my life. Ariel, thank you so much. What do you think this was a bubble and is it bursting? I still trust in Tesla, but how much will the company be worth in four years in terms of stock price? Um, bubble bursting, no, I don't think this is a bubble bursting. I think this is Tesla just catching up to where it should have been in the past. So yeah, not really um, a bubble. In four years, it'll probably be worth more than today, I reckon. My exit strategy from Tesla stock in particular, I don't have one. I actually don't ever plan to need any of my Tesla stock, even though it's a pretty substantial uh, position in my stock portfolio. My plan is to never need it. I actually want to build that up and then deploy those funds for philanthropy in the later half of my life. I don't want that. I don't want to need that money. So ideal plan is that in the future, when I decide to start really pushing into philanthropy, I start selling stock as needed to fund that. Can Tesla do it without Elon? Yes, but slower. If you had asked me five years ago, I would say no. Four years ago, no. Three years ago, no. Two years, no. One, yes. Now, yes. Vero, thank you so much. Two years away from autonomous cars is not much. Arc seemed much less optimistic in their last report. 70% on them failing comment. 
I think the chance of them failing um, should be rated as high because what they're doing is impossible. What, what they're trying to do seems impossible, right? But you would, I would have given Tesla like way more than a seventy percent chance of failing, like until twenty sixteen when I started investing. It's like just because the chance is low doesn't account for the fact that Tesla executes better than anyone and all those kinds of things. And in terms of like autonomy will be solved, it's just when and who is in the lead. And I believe that's Tesla. So. It doesn't really matter if it's two years or like ten years. It's just who gets there first. They win. Space wink. Uh, do I think the stock may drop in the next few days? I don't know what the stock's going to do in two seconds, let alone two days. I'm a long-term investor. I always think long-term. Underage, so I can't buy or sell the stock. I'm playing a game called Virtual Stock. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. The best way to to learn if you can't invest or you don't have money or you're just you're getting started, just do some paper trading because that way you can get a, a feel for what making decisions around investing looks like, what it's like to be holding onto a stock when it's going up or going down and just get a feel for it without putting any money on the line. It's a great way to get experience. It prepares you a lot better for when you actually are in the market. Thanks so much, Chris. A lot of people asking about Virgin Galactic um, SPCE by ticker. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm not interested in buying, no. Uh, I think the space tourism industry will be a cool thing, but I just look at where is the best place to deploy my capital, and yeah, I've deployed it somewhere else. Kids cost money, and <laughs> they sure do, Brad. <laughs> That's why I have none yet that I know of. Dang, Coach Corey Wayne, shout out. Yeah, man, he's the boss. I tell you what, um, you guys had a very positive impact on my life. <laughs> when I visit Ballarat. <laughs> I've been to Ballarat before, actually, the gold town. It's cool. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up really soon. I, uh, I think I'm getting a little bit beyond boring for you now. So many questions still coming through. I think I am a 3% Elon. <laughs> oh, so no one's going to get that. I think the stock is going. Do I think the stock is going to go like really high when Model Y comes out to market? No, I don't believe so. I, I think it's going to take time for people to realise. Like, <clears throat> let me tell you, I've already I've made a video about it. Model Y will make Tesla billions. Model Y is going to be the best-selling Tesla product thus far. Like, it's going to sell more than everything else combined. I'm very confident about this. Not because Elon Musk said it, because because the numbers make sense. That segment is one third of all vehicles sold. It's nearly 30 million. Obviously, there's bigger SUVs and compacts and whatever, but that general category, 30 million per year. Tesla this year delivered less than 400,000 vehicles. Model Y is going to be the best, by far, the best crossover SUV in its category and in the category or so above, because Tesla's cars are so much better that they're like, look about the Porsche Taycan. It's like 150, $200,000. The only thing you can say that about it that's better than, say, the Model S, which is like half the price, is if you prefer the way that the Porsche looks. Um, so, yeah. Autonomy and landing rockets is impossible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, do I think those AI engineers that left Tesla will impact self-driving in any way? <clears throat> If Tesla has enough talent, it's not a big deal. Like, it's, if, if there was one person running AI, like, in the entire project, then, yeah, that'd be a problem. But Tesla hires very aggressively. Like, I don't think you guys realise, but they're, if they're, they're like, hitting up um, in universities and pe where people are graduate. Like, if they need talent, they will do what they need to to get it. Elon Musk was shouting out, he's doing a hackathon at his house this weekend or next weekend. Now, why would Elon Musk do a hackathon at his house? Because everyone who's into nerdy like coding and programming and hacking goes, oh, dude, that would be so sick to go to Elon Musk's house to hack. Like He's trying to get the best engineers, the software engineers in the world, to know and want to work at Tesla. He wants them all. A very smart plan because the, the people that work there, they're going to drive the business forward. All right, getting through these comments, guys. Oh, I'm going to end the stream soon. Uh, don't worry. I have things to do. Counting my Tesla money. I'm just kidding. Now, I've got more content coming out for you guys, so I'm going to get back to those. Uh, battery material supply chain companies. Uh, in terms of investing, Tesla's going to become that company, I think. Heard the Catherine Wood say that price target <coughs> price of Tesla cars would go below 25 as the cost to make cargoes down. Yeah, I heard her say that. 
her reasoning makes sense, 100%. You've got the economies of scale from just increasing your output. Then you've also got new learnings and improvements in the process and like everything. So things keep getting better in terms of manufacturing. Then you find new efficiencies in the actual product and materials. Then on top of that, you've got stuff inside that's just getting cheaper, like the battery and the, the computer. And Model 3 today, like at some point in time, you can build the same car definitely for 25K. For sure. It's just a matter of time. Am I doing any sports? I squat. That's it. I've got a really bad upper body, so uh, yeah, I, I squat and I deadlift and uh, do some shoulder press and that's about it. Just enough to, to keep fit and healthy. Your first bit is, oh, YouTube added a second, Dan. Strong lifts. Um, actually, yeah, strong lifts, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very effective uh, strength gain training program. I just can't, um, we can't do some of it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I've got more content to make. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, it's been awesome. As I said at the start of the video, I'm sure some of you have just joined. This is not normal. Um, Tesla stock is not going to be doing this every day. So keep your wits about you and use your head. Don't be uh, making emotion-based decisions around this because this kind of activity, uh, yeah, is, is very uncommon. And so you don't want to be making rash decisions and don't want to be buying a stock because you have a fear of missing out. If you have ever thought about writing something like, I'm worried about missing out, something along those lines, don't touch the stock because you're not in the right place mentally to be buying. Anyway, guys, I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all.